Hello Culture Vultures! Welcome back to a new month and a new edition of Culture Vultures. This month we are talking about music. More specifically, we're talking about instruments that play music. Now there are lots of different kinds of instruments that we have divided into different types and different sections of instruments. We have stringed instruments, those are instruments that play on strings like violins or cellos. We have woodwind instruments. Those are instruments that use reeds that you blow into, things like the clarinet or the flute. We have brass instruments. Those are instruments usually made out of metal that you blow into. Those are things like trumpets or trombones or tubas. But today we are talking about a very particular kind of instrument. We are talking about percussion instruments. Percussion instruments are some of my favorite kinds of instruments because they're so much fun to play. And that's because percussion instruments are instruments that you play by striking them or shaking them. And that can be a lot of fun sometimes. So let's take a look at some of the cool percussion instruments that are out there. Okay, we're going to start simple with the most basic form of percussion. And I've got these here. They're made out of wood. They're shaped like a cylinder. And basically, they're just two big shiny sticks. But guess what? We don't call them big shiny sticks because that doesn't sound like an instrument. We call these claves. But really, they're just big shiny sticks. And how do you play claves? Well, it's pretty simple. You've got two of them and you just smack them together like this. And that's it. That's how you play. This is an instrument for keeping rhythm in a particular piece. It's very good at pounding out a beat. It's not very good at playing specific notes. So this is Next, we have something that I bet you've seen before. Do you know what this is? This is a maraca. It's a maraca. Now, maracas are usually made out of wood. They've got a handle and a dome shape. And inside this dome, you put lots of other material, either small stones or maybe pieces of rice or pebbles or peas or beans. And to play the maraca, you just shake it like a, like a baby's rattle. You shake it. This is another one that's good for keeping rhythm in a piece because you can... But let's talk about another percussion instrument that rattles. This is an instrument called the shakiri. Shakiri. It's kind of like a maraca. It's a gourd. It's got a handle. It's got a cylinder up at the top. But instead of its rattles being on the inside, the shakiri weaves a net and it puts its rattles on the outside of the cylinder. So when you shake it, you can still hear the rattles, but you can also see them on the outside here. This is an instrument that comes from West Africa. This is an instrument that comes from Latin America and the Caribbean and particularly Mexico. I have the Mexican variety right here. This is called a guiro. And a guiro is a super fun instrument. It's shaped kind of like a fish. It's got a tapered end and sort of a cylindrical body that tapers on this side as well. It's got two holes in the middle of its body. Most of it is smooth, the colorful parts up here and down here, but the middle has ridges along the side. 
And this is how you play the guiro. There are a couple different things you can do. You usually use a stick with it, so you can whack it, or you can use the stick and run it along the ridges. And that makes a scraping sound. So when you do them together, it can make a really fun combination of sounds. The scraping and the tapping. something you might see a lot of in the next month or so. These are jingle bells. Jingle bells are made out of metal. They've got slits along the center and on the inside there's a second metal ball and when you shake it it makes a jingling sound. The metal ball on the inside hits the metal ball on the outside, and that's what makes the sound. These are lots of fun to play around Christmas time. Here's another one that's fun to play, and this one is really easy to recognize because it's named after what shape it is. This is a triangle. That's super easy. It's shaped like a triangle. And this is also made out of metal, like the bells. You need to be sure not to hold it by the metal part because then you won't be able to hear the sounds. So I'm holding this from a little handle right here. And if you hold the handle and then you have another little metal rod and you hit the metal on the metal triangle and it sounds like... makes a very high-pitched tinging sound. This is fun to play, too. These are called zills. Zills, that's a funny name for an instrument. But they're called zills, and they're basically very small metal cymbals. They have a strap that comes out of the top so you don't have to touch the metal part. I've got two of them here. They usually come as a pair. And the way you play the zills are by tapping them together with the metal parts. When the metal hits the other metal, that's what makes the sound for the instruments. These you'll see a lot in Turkey and in the Middle East because they're usually used and play by dancers who use them to accentuate their dancing. It's really neat to watch. This is another one you probably recognize. This is a tambourine. A tambourine is an instrument made out of two parts. It's got lots of pairs of zills around the edge, and also in the middle, it's got a drum which is uh, a metal surface covered with usually some sort of animal hide, traditionally. And tambourines are fun to play because you get the shaking of the zilts, but you also can pat it like a drum. And if you play them both at the same time, you can get a really fun combination of sounds. That's the tambourine. Speaking of drums, let's look at some other drums. This is a cylindrical drum. It's got the wooden frame, and it's got its covered base. And you play this one by striking it on the face. This is another one that's heavily used as a rhythm instrument because it's very good at keeping, keeping time. But drums 
can come in lots of different shapes and sizes. This one is a circle and it's sort of short, but this one, ooh, this one is very, very tall. It's still got the metal frame. It's still got the cover here that you tap. It's still hollow on the inside, but this one has a strap because a lot of times people will sling a strap over their shoulder so they can play it while standing up. That's lots of fun! Now this is my favorite kind of percussion instrument. This is a piano. You've probably seen pianos before. They're pretty common in music. And the piano is made from lots of keys in a giant wooden frame. And you play the piano by pressing the keys in a particular order. The piano is a pretty complicated instrument because it's both a percussion instrument and a strings instrument. And let me show you why. This is the inside of a piano. You see all of the different strings? Each string is a different note that you can play on the piano. And the sound is made when you press a key and one of these little hammers strikes the strings on the inside of the piano. And that's why it's both percussion and strings. It has the strings of a stringed instrument, but also it has the hammers hitting the strings, which makes it percussion too. For the next couple of instruments, I'm going to need my table because they have a wide variety of pitches and each instrument has a different pitch. These are called chimes. A chime is a metal bar and then it has a metal lever with a rubber mallet on the end. And the way that you play the chime is by holding it in your hand holding it back so that the mallet rolls back and then flicking it forward so that the mallet hits the metal and makes the pitch. Now all sound is caused by vibrations and it's really easy to see that in an instrument like the chime because when the rubber mallet hits the metal and creates that pitch you can feel the metal vibrating and shaking. That's where the sound comes from. And the different shape that the metal is in, the different size, is what determines what sound it makes. That's because this is a pitched instrument. It's an instrument that gives off a specific vibration for a specific note on the musical scale. So for example, this one is a low C. We know that's because it's a bigger um, bar, which makes a lower sound. And this one is one octave higher. It's a smaller bar, and so when we hear it, it produces a higher sound. Now, how do you stop the sound? Well, you have to stop the vibration to stop the sound. If you play it, eventually, 
the vibrations will stop on their own, but sometimes that takes a long time. So if you want the sound to stop earlier, you've got to stop the vibrations. And for chimes, the way you do that is by pressing it against something, against the table, against your shirt, something like that. And you have a different one of these for every note in the song. So usually this is an instrument that lots of people play together because that's the only way you can get a wide variety of sounds. But I'm This is another percussion instrument similar to the chimes. These are called handbells. Now for these, I've got to put on my special gloves because your hands, which is what you use to play the handbells, your hands have oils on them. Sometimes you can't even see them or feel them, but you have oils on them. And if you touch the bells with the oils on your hands, that can mess up the bells. So we wear gloves when we play our handbells. Now the handbell, is pretty similar to the chime. It has a handle here. It's got this metal bell up at the top and on the inside of the bell is another little rubber mallet. And we play it the same way. We hold the handbell so that the rubber mallet is in the back and when we flick it forward it hits the bell and that makes the sound. This is another instrument that's a lot more fun to play when you have lots of people because then you can make a wide variety of sounds because again, every bell has its own pitch and makes its own particular sound. today. I hope you enjoy learning about all sorts of different percussion instruments. Instruments are a great thing to have and to learn how to play. It's really fulfilling. So maybe if you see one that you like in this video, you can get one and give it a try. I promise it's well worth your time. I will see you next month for a new Culture Vultures. Okay.